All right, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Kodash. The bonds unto the apostles of Great Millstone and teaching you well. And as always, peace and salutations unto the elect. This is the brother Benaiah from the Great Millstone Dallas branch. And I'm going to entitle this lesson, Pray for Wisdom Above All. All right. And as you can see from the screen, I have received this from a family member. All right. Shalakin, I'm going to read it. It says, Lord, as, as you increase my finances, give me wisdom to manage it. All right. And then I, <laughs> when I first received it and I read it, I immediately thought how Jake whole mindset, whole mindset is just wrapped around fucking money, man. You know. They're so concerned with money that that's all that they ask the Lord for. You know what I'm saying? Which that doesn't please the Lord, man. You know, and I immediately thought of uh, the prayer of Solomon when you read in um First Kings chapter three, all right, real quick, on how Solomon had the opportunity to pray for these particular things, riches and power and, you know, all these things. But instead, Solomon chose wisdom above all, you see, in him and by him choosing wisdom. All right. It pleased the most high, you see, to the point to where the most high gave him that wisdom that he asked for. OK, and he blessed him with everything else, man. Wisdom, wi uh, uh, power, money, wealth, women, all the long life. The Lord added all that unto him just because he, all right, was pleased with what Solomon asked for. Solomon didn't ask for, for uh, uh, you know, wealth. You see, if he would have asked for wealth, he would have got that, that one thing and, and nothing else, man. You see, but through Solomon choosing the right thing that pleases the Lord, all right, he, everything else followed with, which which reminds me of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, where it tells you to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all, all these things shall be added unto, the, unto it. Well, Solomon is, is that example of, of that scripture right there, man. You see, by seeking wisdom, okay? Wisdom is, when you read the scriptures, man, wisdom is, 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 is priced far above anything, all right, any, any uh, element of the earth, man. All right. Any diamond or jewel that you can you can think of all the wealth in the world. OK, cannot be compared to with it uh, compared with this knowledge and his wisdom that we receive through the Holy Spirit. Man, you see, that's why we are we are way well off than these 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 jakes that made it in this life. Man, you see the Will Smiths, you know what I'm saying? The, the Floyd Mayweathers. Here it is. They got all that money. They got all that wealth. All right. And, and they're still not. It, it, it can't satisfy them, man. You see, at the end of the day, they, they still miserable. All right. But by choosing wisdom and, and it's ultimately that fucking that fucking money that they have, all the millions and billions of dollars that they have is not going to be able to save them, man. But wisdom can save you from what's coming. You see, true wisdom, not the wisdom of this world, you know. But the wisdom that's from uh, from on high, man, you see. But let's get this right quick in First um, Kings chapter three. And I'm going to start at verse uh, six. I'm reading NLT. It says, Solomon replied, you show faithful love to your servant, my father, David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued your faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Now, Lord, now, O Lord, my God, you have made me king instead of, of my father, David. But I am like a, ch a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people. A nation so great and numerous, they cannot be numbered. It says, give me an understanding heart so I so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern the, this great people of yours? You see, here it is. Solomon is asking for wisdom. Let's see what how the Mosai replies. Verse 10, it says, and the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. You see, so by us seeking wisdom. All right. The Lord is pleased with that. You see, it says. Verse 11. So so the most I replied, because you have asked for wisdom and government and governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the or the death of your enemies. I will give you what you ask for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has ever uh, has has had or ever will have. And I will also, yeah, so the Lord granted him this wisdom and made him the most famous, all right, man on earth with uh, with the knowledge, man, you see? Even until, he, uh, even until these times, people still talk about the wisdom of Solomon, okay? Verse 13, it says, and this is the point, this is another point, it says, and I will also, you see, so not only did the Lord give him this wisdom, okay, it says, I will also give you what you did not ask for, 
riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. You see? So here it is. It, it pleased the Lord of Solomon's request. Okay? Because ultimately, that's when the Lord will answer your prayer. When your when your prayer aligns with the will of the Lord, man, is is the Lord the, the Lord is pleased with it, man. You see, rather than oh, I want I want money or finances, this Lord, this that, you know what I'm saying? Shit that's pleasing to your flesh, man. Okay, of your own self interest instead of the interest and will of the heavenly Father, man. You see, that's why our prayers got to line up with the with the will of the Lord, man. You know, and the Lord was pleased with that, man. As you can see. Going back into that point I made about Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. So when you seek in wisdom, OK, it's going to bring you all that. Just like with Solomon, you seeking wisdom is going to bring you fame and riches. You see. By us seeking riches, I mean, wisdom in this time, that's exactly what it's going to do. Not only is it going to save us from riches, it's going to save us from death. Lord willing, man, you see. Because like I said, man, all these millions and dollars that these people have is not going to be able to save them for what's coming. That's why it says in Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6 that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and the strength of thy salvation. OK, the fear of the Lord, OK, is his treasure. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, the scriptures tell you that the wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. You see, everything goes back unto the fear of the Lord when you look at it from faith. All right. To wisdom, everything goes back into that root, which is the fear of the Lord. Everything starts with the fear of the Lord, man. You see? And by you seeking the fear of the Lord, okay, all these things can be added unto you, wisdom. And ultimately, through that wisdom and enduring unto the end, that's going to bring you, all right, immortality, man. Riches, you see? Women, power, all these things that, that we lust for, by seeking wisdom, we're going to be able to attain it, man. You see? And Solomon said himself, when you read in Wisdom of Solomon chapter uh, 7, I'm going to read in the GNT. I'm going to start at verse uh, 7. It says, Solomon declares his love for wisdom. Realizing that I was only human, I prayed and was given understanding. The spirit of wisdom came to me. I regarded her more highly than, it, than any throne or crown. You see, so here it is. Solomon is explaining that he, when he, when we read in that prayer, that he he rather chose wisdom than anything else, man. You see, and he's, he's, he's explaining it. You see, it says, Wealth is nothing compared to her. That's why he didn't choose wealth instead, man. It says precious jewels cannot cannot equal her wealth. Besides wisdom, all the gold in the world is a handful of sand. And silver is nothing more than clay. I value her more than health and good looks. Hers is a brightness that never never grows dim. I prefer to I prefer it to any other light. This is the point. When wisdom came to me, all good things came with her. Matthew 6 and 33, it says she brought me untold riches. I was happy with them all because wisdom had brought them to me. I had not realized before that she was the source of all things. You see. So wisdom is that source, man. You see. These are things that we can learn from Solomon, man. You see about seeking wisdom, man. And like I said, the mass, hey, man, the mass majority of our people, man, they're, they're not concerned with. All right wisdom man they look at this wisdom they look at the knowledge that we have as nothing you see that's why they walk by and scoff that's why our family talk shit because they don't see the value they don't see the value in this wisdom that we've been bestowed they don't understand that it's it's this is not worldly wisdom man you see this is not a fucking college education you see this is not a, de a degree or a mass it's far above that man you see that's why when you read in First Corinthians, it talks about how the Lord made the wisdom of this world uh, trash, man. Roughly paraphrasing, you see, because the true wisdom is what the wisdom of okay that comes from uh that comes from above, man. You see, and ultimately going back into the fear of the Lord, everything starts with the fear, man. You see, I want to uh, let's get this in Job. This is Job chapter um, because that's what true wisdom is. Like that, like that picture say talking about <laughs> uh, 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 give me wisdom to manage it. What wisdom? You see, what wisdom of the earthly wisdom? You see, what wisdom are you talking about? More than likely, these people are talking about the wisdom of this world, man. And like the scriptures say, the wisdom of this world is foolishness, man. All right. But I want to get this in the book of Job real quick. I'm going to get a couple of them in Job. This is Job chapter 12 and verse 13. It says, I'm going to read in the NLT. It says, but true wisdom and power are found in the most high. Counsel and understanding are his. You see? So that's what a true wisdom is, man. 
All right? Because when all this shit start popping off, these people ain't going to have no clue what's going on, man. Okay? That's why this, this, if you can understand this truth, man, and you understand what you're a part of, man, it, you hold it dearly, man. You see? Because this is not, this is not earth. This is not something from earth, man. This is heavenly wisdom. Okay? And it's going to guide us through the hard times in the, in the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Isaiah 33 and 6. Right? So let's go to Job chapter, um, let's go to Job chapter 28 real quick. Then I'm going to end it off. Just want to do something real quick because I'm a spirit. All right, this is Job chapter 28, and I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, I'm going to read in the NLT. It says, but do people know where to find wisdom? Where where can they find understanding? No one knows where, where to find it, for it is not found among the living. You see, it says, it is not here, says the ocean, nor is it here, says the sea. It cannot be it cannot be bought with gold. It cannot be purchased with silver. It's worth more than all the gold of Ophir, greater than the precious onyx and, and lapis lazuli. Wisdom is more valuable than gold and crystal. It cannot be purchased with jewels, mountains of fine gold. Coral and jasper are worthless in, in trying to get it. It's worthless in, worthless in trying to get it. The price of wisdom is far above rubies. You see? This is all the precious thing that, that people see and people, uh, 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 you know, go after because it's valuable and on the earth, man. But here it is. It's saying that this wisdom. All right. That comes from above. All right. It's more valuable than all that shit combined. All right. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to jump down. Actually. I'm going I'm to start. I'm going to jump to verse 20. It says, but do people know where to find wisdom? That's the question. Where can they find understanding? Is it hiding from the eyes of all humanity? Even the sharp eyed birds in the sky cannot discover it. Destruction and death says we've we've heard only rumors to where wisdom can be found. The most high alone understands the way of wisdom. He knows where it can be found. For he looks throughout the whole earth and sees everything under heaven. He decided how hard the wind should blow and how the rain should fall. He made the law for the rain and laid out a path for the lightning. Then he then he saw wisdom and elevated it. He set it in a place and examined it thoroughly. It says this is the point. And this is what he says to all humanity. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. I'm going to read this last verse 28 in the KJV. And unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to, de and to, and to depart from evil is understanding. You see. So this wisdom, man, seek wisdom, man. All right. Pray for wisdom above all, you see, because that's what's truly valuable. OK, and that's the wisdom. All right. You can obtain salvation, you see. Because these people who's only only praying to the Lord for money and financial gain, <laughs> shit, they not going to make it, man. All right. So with that, man, I didn't want to make it too long. I just wanted to just, you know, put this out there. Was on my spirit, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahakwadash, the bonds unto the apostles, the great millstone, that teach him well. Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.